The Legend of Jamrud and Grania The Legend of Jamrud and Grania is one of Ireland's greatest romantic stories. Grania was said to be the most beautiful woman in Ireland. As you can see in the right bottom corner, she was gorgeous and ginger and beautiful. Here we explain one of Ireland's most famous but tragic stories. Rania, known as the most beautiful woman in Ireland, was also the daughter of Cormac McGart, the High King of Ireland of the time. Eligible princesses and princes, chieftains, travelled to meet and court Rania, including Chief Phil McGill, who was aging but had his set his eyes on the young Rania as a second wife. Jamrud was the son of a man named Don, and he was raised with his half-brother, the son of a man named Rock. One day, the son of Rock was frightened by an animal, and he ran between the legs of Jamrud's father, Don, to hide. Don squeezed the child between his thighs until he died. When the child's father, Rock, found his son's broken body, he wept and he raged with anger. Then he performed a magical ceremony and brought his son back to life in the body of a wild boar. He put a gaza, which is a spell, on it to kill Don's son, Jermud, and sent the boar off into the wilds because he knew that Jermud had a skiza on him never to pierce the skin of a pig, and would not be able to defend himself. Jermud grew up to be a great warrior, and passed the rigorous tests to become one of the female. The love and the loyalty he had for Fionn Macool was very strong, but Jermud was known for more than just his fighting skills. He was very handsome and popular with the women. Would you believe? Pion McCool was getting on in years, but was still the greatest warrior in all of the era. He held onto his place as the head of the Fianna, but he was aware that some day the years would start to tell on him. Every year on his birthday, he undertook to leap across a great chasm because he would rather die as soon as his strength began to fail him than to live on and slowly decline. Fionn loved all the finest things in life. Feasting, storytelling, hunting, and good company. And he decided that he had been waiting too long without a wife. So he called his men together and asked for their advice in the matter. They all agreed that the only woman in Ireland fit to be the wife of the great Fionn McCool was the daughter of the High King, Cormac McGart, called Cormia. Now, Finn was aware that he was a good deal older than Gronia, and he was shy of asking her for her hand himself. So he sent two ambassadors or messengers to speak to Grania on his behalf. However, when Grania was just 12 years old, she had seen a boy playing hurling and the wind had blown his hair back from his face and she had immediately fallen in love with him, completely and irrevocably. And as the years passed, she had refused every man who had ever asked for her hand for love of the boy she met on the hurling field. But when she heard that the great Fionn McCool was asking for her hand in marriage, she was flattered to be honest. She decided that she was had set some long time waiting for this boy and she didn't even know his name or where she could find him. 
so she might as well just marry Pion. When her answer was given, a great feast was held to celebrate the upcoming wedding. Grania hid behind a curtain to spy out and catch a glimpse of her husband-to-be. She wondered why Fionn had asked her for himself, and she began to regret her decision as he was much older than her. And then Fionn moved out of the way, and she saw a man. Sit, seated on the other side of him, Jermid Oduna, the boy from the hurling field who she had loved since she was only just twelve. Can you believe that? The chance. And so, in that moment, Grana resolved that she was not going to marry him, Finn the Cool. She sat down to the feast, saying nothing, and passed around a cup of wine into two which she had put a sleeping posit. She gave it to Fionn and to all of her family. Then Grania turned to Jeremy and put another Gaza to run away with her. Jeremy was torn. He had never betrayed Fionn and never wanted to, but he could not go against a Gaza put on him by a beautiful woman like herself. She told him that she was going to ready herself and went to her chambers. Very unhappily, Jermid went away with Grania. They met with Angus Og, the god of love, who thoroughly approved of their match and decided to help them. He told them that they were never going to be able to sleep in a cave with one opening or a house with one door. Or a tree with one branch. And that they would never be able to eat where they cooked or sleep where they ate. They would have to keep moving if they were to stay ahead of Fionn and Fionn. When Fionn the Cool awoke the next day from the sleeping potion and realized what had happened to him, his heart was broken and angry. It was not Ronnie's desertion that hurt him, but in fact, Jermid had betrayed him. He set out with grimness and a set in his jaw to catch up with them and get his revenge. For a very long time, he chased them over hills and over valleys. They were always one step ahead. Every time he came across their traces, he grew more and more furious. One night they slept in a house with seven doors, and Fionn and Fiona caught up with them. A member of the Fiona stood at each door to make sure they could not escape. Angus O came down, the god of love, and told them that he would spare them away to safety. But Jermid refused. He sent Ronya away to the god and stayed behind. Jermid went to each door in turn and at each door the man who guarded it offered him to let him go, till he came to the seventh door, guarded by Fionn McCoon, and roaring in anger, he grunted to him at the door, 
Fionn told him he would kill him if he came out that door. Jamrid opened the door to face Fionn, Fionn himself, to, and took to fight. But then Fionn surrounded him. He leaped up with the leap of a salmon, jumped over their heads and over the branches and trees, and ran away to join the army. After years and years on the run, and all the time Jamrid and Rania had spent living together as man and wife, and raising their four sons and their one daughter, and never able to stop or rest, they decided to try and make peace with Fionn Nakun. Surprisingly, Fionn agreed to put his anger aside and welcomed them back with a great feast. They were finally able to settle down with their family and live in peace. Jamrid and Fionn, over the time, rebuilt their great friendship. Some years later, Fionn had asked Jamrid to go hunting with them. They came across a terrible beast, the wild boar of Ben Bogan. They tracked it through the wilds, and when they cornered it at last, the boar ran straight for Jermid. It was the son of Rock, who had been killed so many years before, and it had fulfilled the good geese to kill the son of Dawn. Fiona saw the beast charging at him. <laughs> and reminded Jermid of his Giza to never pierce the skin of a pig or you'll die. The boar gored Jermid and Jermid hit his head on the hilt of the sword, killing it. Fionn saw Jermid didn't have much long left to live, and the great friendship between them moved his heart. So he went back to the water of the stream, and only to let the trickle through his fingers. However, it was too late. And Jamrid was laying there dying. He had asked Fionn McCool to give him a drink of water from his hands. And anyone who drank a water from the hands of Fionn McCool would be restored to health because of his magical thumb. So Fionn went to the river, carried back water to Jamrid. And for the second time he went back for the water. And there was no bitterness left in him. He poured the water in between Jermid's lips, but it was too late. Jermid's Juvenal was already dead. Thank you for watching. The end.